Have you ever thought or suffered from a splinter or a paper cut? I have, and I usually complain a lot about it. I don't like them. They make me complain all the time when I use my laptop, when I use my phone. I actually even one time said, it's the worst pain ever. Until last summer, I suffered or experienced pain of passing a kidney stone. That was a different level of pain. See, how we experience pain, how we experience pain, okay, how we experience pain differ from person to person. We, when we have, when we experience it, we actually um, uh, um, um, have different feelings, how we feel about that pain. So when we are feeling sick and we go see a doctor, we actually try to tell them our story. The story is usually subjective. The physicians, on the other hand, try to take this information and turn it into an objective diagnosis. And based on this objective diagnosis, they will try to come out with um, a treatment protocol. This is called the trial and error method. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't work, we usually go back to the doctor and they will adjust the treatment protocol. But sometimes we even develop adverse reactions and those can be dangerous and sometimes even fatal. Nowadays, a lot of us actually self-diagnose ourselves through the internet, and when we go see the physician, we're only there to have a second opinion, right? So, with the emergence of the concept of personalized medicine, that was very welcomed by the medical community. The, the, the goal of personalized medicine is to maximize the clinical outcome while minimizing the unnecessary risk when we go see a healthcare professional. In a nutshell, personalized medicine is not to treat all patients with the same condition, with the same treatment plan, but to customize it based on genetic information, available biomarkers, or physiological traits, and to customize the treatment for the individual patients according to that information. So, personalized medicine is actually presenting an excellent opportunity for higher education for, to predict the future of the needs of our communities. Personalized medicine is an opportunity to look at the trends that we see in our societies and build on them academic programs and courses that they will benefit our communities in the future. I would like to go over a few of those trends. Number one is demographics. If you look around, you will notice that we are older and we are different. With the aging of the population, we are seeing a shift from acute diseases to chronic diseases, such as diabetes, high blood pressure. We're seeing a shift from infectious diseases to non-infectious diseases, such as cancer. We're also seeing a new wave of physiological and mental disabilities. We're also, with the migration that we're noticing, we are seeing uh, an ethnic diversity in our communities. Next time you're at the stoplight, please look around. You will think you're in a meeting for the United Nations. People from all over the world coming to one community there's a potential that we might change the genetic diversity of the community. 
Another demographic, and this one is big, is science and technology. Subspecialties that we studied long time ago are now huge sciences, such as genomics. We have new fields of study, like proteomics, that we are studying and we are learning more about. Nanotechnology is producing to us concepts we only saw a bottom in science fiction movies a few years ago. Now they are realities. Virtual reality is not just a game. It's used in healthcare to treat psychological and mental problems. It's also used to treat, to help cancer patients to cope with uh, uh, chemotherapy. Robotics are allowing surgeons to perform surgeries, complicated procedures, miles away from their patients. E-health, telemedicine, are allowing patients to stay home and we take care of them while they are at their own homes. And the list goes on and on and on. 3D printing, medical imaging, and all of these changes in science and technology are really making a big difference. The third trend is globalization and the impact of globalization on personalized medicine and potentially higher education. The weather is different. We're also seeing this global surveillance database that they are available for all of us. Something happens in one part of the world, we know about it just seconds later. Also, workforce is now becoming more global. Two more trends that they affect the future of higher education. The social trend and the economic trend. The social trend, we are predicting or we are building programs, academic programs, for future generation of students that they may, val may value things different than we may value now. Work-life balance may be more important to the future generations than we have right now. Changing career paths every two, three years, maybe five years, it may be more acceptable than it is right now. The relationship between a strong economy and attending higher education it's something that will establish, and this has to be also in consideration when we are planning the future programs. So personalized medicine is actually giving higher education an excellent opportunity to build the bridge into the future. And don't fall into the gap of the traditional programs that we have and continue to have and continue to build. Higher education revolves around three areas, curriculum, delivery, and the system itself. And for us to do this, we have to consider few options. First of all, we need to consider population health as a major player. We also need to look at preventive medicine. We need to attract people to less attractive careers, such as geriatric, primary care, we need to look at establishing new specializations. And to the existing specializations, we might want to create new subspecialties and integration of competencies. The different fields of study, they need to be integrated and to be built around patient-centered pedagogy and in a team-based approach where it values multicultural and multi-generational teams. Technology and society are going to play a major role in higher education. Who said classes have to be five days a week? Who said semesters have to be 15 weeks long or a quarter long? Who said I have to go to school for four years to get a degree or two years to get a degree? All these things need to be addressed. Education is our passport to the future. For tomorrow belongs to the people that prepares for it today. Thank you.